Hello students, so uh, I'm away at the moment, but I uh, hope this whole video isn't too bad. Um, we need to carry on anyway. So we're doing chapter 3i, it's on page 171, about in decreasing and increasing by a percentage. Um, the concept here is very simple to do. I think the only real thing that we could get hung up about is uh, perhaps maybe the in incorrectly interpreting the words, the way the questions presented to us. It's basically um, using fractions and percentage tricks that we've already learned before from grade seven. So there's going to be a lot of terminology at the very front of this little video, so bear with me. So uh, we've got some important terminology here. So any decrease, um, if you remember with uh, Math Hilda's turtle shell, each shell has a different like math symbol on it and subtraction means Subtraction could be things like uh, the difference, or remove from, or less than. Those sort of words in a paragraph would translate to a subtraction going on. Here, the word decrease, or reduction, um, can be signified by all sorts of words here. So we've got reduction, we've got loss, depreciation, sale. That one uh, confused me for a second, but then when I thought about it for a bit longer, they probably mean things like, uh, this item is on sale for 20%, so it needs more information rather than just the word sale. You know, um, so there's a there's a, a, re a reduction of percentage off the price, and we got discount. Um, so here's an example of a question that I didn't solve here. So calculate the new price when an item marked at fifteen dollars is discounted. So we're going to decrease our value by three dollars. So that should be what uh, fifteen take three. What is that twelve? That'll be the final. Now, um, I don't think our uh, year eight exam questions will be that simple. So uh, prepare yourselves. I think a lot of the time the reduction that or uh, the reduction or incre uh, increase of, of the value is probably going to be expressed as a percentage. So rather than this, it might say something like 35 percent instead. OK, uh, and here's just a general rule. So whatever the new value is, it'll be the old value take away this uh, reduction or decrease value. Likewise, with increase, we've got some new words here. So markup, um, you might be familiar with this if you work in retail or if you have a family business, markup is what you would add to a cost so that you can make up for your own business running costs, staff, you know, keeping the lights running, pay the rent for the building space and so on. Uh, and profit would be things that you would um, uh, add on to a sale price so that you can not only meet your running costs but also make some money after you've done everything otherwise the business just isn't profitable doesn't run so like the uh, the rule above we have our new value is our original value plus some increase so again rather than having some finite or fixed number of dollars i think it's more likely to be you know uh, marked up by let's say you know 72 percent would be more more uh, more likely to be seen on our test because it's, it's going to take more skill to solve. Okay, so here's some more jargon. So we got some words here, selling price, retail price, wholesale price, and GST. And I've got them outlined here one at a time. Look, um, I'll just read these out. If you're bored to death, you can just skip through this video a bit. But I think there might be a chance we or some of us get hung up on our test paper if they present it to us using this jargon. So selling price, uh, this is what the price tag looks like. If you were to walk into a, a clothing store and you pick up the uh, clothing item and you see a price tag, that is the selling price. That's what you're looking at after the business has uh, covered their running costs, covered the cost of the item, and also their profit margin or markup price. So um, you got retail price, uh, oh, yeah, selling price would also, if it's, if the, uh, you might see another perspective, this is the end or final uh, price tag. Because you know that sometimes when you pick up a clothing item, it's on sale. So whatever the price tag says on it, you also have to consider what the big sale sign sticker in the store is also telling you. Is that all these items here at this, you know, bench with all the shirts or whatever, they're being reduced by some amount. So they're saying to you, whatever this retail price, um, and you remove the discount. Uh, your sale price could also be the wholesale price, which is what the business, the clothing store, has to pay for that clothing item, um, and in addition to the markup. And that markup would be including all the running costs and profits and stuff like that. Retail price, 
this is the price uh, that they would normally display if there was um, no sale going on. And this is when they've already factored in their, their profit or their markup. So it's already a bit higher than, than the actual uh, original price, the original cost of the, of the garment to buy for the company. Now we've got wholesale price. Um, this one is the price that the business pays for uh, for that product. So if you're a clothing brand uh, and you sell jeans, you uh, will buy from the actual manufacturer directly in most cases, at least I'm, I don't want a business person, but I imagine that, to be the, that would be the case. And uh, if you're a franchise, then you would purchase that gene, the jean products uh, in massive quantities, like shipping containers full of them. And that ends up being uh, uh, cost effective rather instead of like doing, you know, 4,000 uh, individual orders off of Amazon, each going into their own parcel delivered to your business. Uh, it's more uh, you save money on shipping costs if you get in a big shipping container and wait a long time. So the wholesale price is often the cheapest it can be um, uh, bought from uh, directly from the manufacturer. Once you've got that wholesale price, you would normally add your markup. Uh, which is going to include all the running costs of the business and profits. The last fancy word here is GST. Um, this would make immediate sense to anybody who's Australian, but if you are new to the country uh, or unfamiliar with this, it stands for Goods and Services Tax. So it's basically a tax. In Australia, that amount is, uh, you have to add 10% to the sale. So the government makes some money uh, from all the businesses that operate within Australia, every time they sell something or they sell a service, um, you uh, the government gets a cut from that uh, transaction. So what the retailer will often do is that you know they get their wholesale price, they add their markup, which will be running costs, paying their staff, also including their profits, so that business will come ahead of you know the whole process, and then they would add on top the ten percent GST. Uh, that way, um, the business isn't being penalized. They're not losing money because they have to pay tax, in a way. Uh, that's simplistic, but that's, that's basically what it is. It's a 10% tax for uh, in Australia. Um, this is basically what the question looks like from the book. It's basically like this. So if we can solve this, you are golden for all the practice problems that are to follow. Um, for more interesting sakes, I've uh, put something a bit more complicated down below, but... I'll just do the basic one here. Find the new value when $160 is increased by 40%. So if we write this one out, uh, we got our new value equals the $160. Increased means we're going to be adding here. So here's the increase sign, 40%. Now, what I've written just now doesn't make any sense because um, this needs something next to it for it to make sense. Uh, what's, what, are, what are we relating the percentage to? It's like, I think I was telling my year sevens the other day that um, when I hear the word percent, I'm often listening for what the context is. It's like you might ask, um, you might ask me, it's like, hey, Mr. Bowman, uh, how are you today? And I said to you, I am 30 times. And then you're kind of looking at me strangely because you're expecting me to finish my sentence. You're expecting, what does he mean by 30 times? Is he 30 times heavier than he was yesterday? That would explain the big, uh, the belt he's purchased today. Or uh, is he 30 times richer? Or is he 30 times uh, uh, happier? Okay, so we're listening, you're expecting me to finish my sentence. When I, he when I see this percentage here, I am expecting something to be next to it to finish the sentence out. So 40% of what? I'm doing 40% of the original cost, which is $160 again. I know it's a bit, uh, 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 I know I'm writing it over and over again, which seems superfluous, which means you're doing more work than you really have to, but I'm trying to just explain it all in detail here uh, in one go. And if you remember, uh, of can translate to a multiplication symbol. So now what we're looking at here is, I'll just remove the dollar signs here just to keep things nice and neat. 40%, when I translate that, that becomes 40 out of 100. Uh, of, which we already translated into a multiplication symbol. And now we have 
uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm going to include this down here. Now, this multiplication thing is not going to work unless I make them both a fraction, provided I don't have access to a calculator. And let's be honest, students, this question is very simple to do without the calculator, so it'll be very likely to be on the non-calculator test. So we're going to solve it. Now that I've got them all in fraction form, why haven't I converted this one to a fraction just yet? I could if I really wanted to, so let's just do that for, for safety if you want to. But I find that sometimes in these questions, I don't need to do that. I'll just see, I'll do the multiplication step first and just see what I get. Because sometimes it ends up being a one uh, underneath when I finish this portion of the solving and I don't need a one to be here as well after all. So let's just see what we get when we do our multiplication and see what happens. So uh, now I am going to uh, do some simplifying. So one of my favorite things to do is to uh, divide by 10 when I'm simplifying. So I can divide top and bottom by 10, which would give me 4 tenths. So it's almost like the two zeros just disappear. And I can also do diagonal simplification because I have the multiplication symbol. You can see it's got that diagonal line to the multiplication symbol, which, me, which can give you a clue that you're allowed to go diagonally in this occasion. So I'm also going to divide by 10. That leaves me with uh, the numerators of 4 times 16. Oh, you're going to watch me struggle now. Let's see, 4 times 6, was it 32? 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 3 I say, which is 7. 1 times 1 underneath is just 1. So now I've got to add these two figures together. Uh, 160 plus the 72. Oh god, I'm going to do it in my head. Let's see, uh, add the 2, 7 plus 6 is... Oh, my brain's not very good right now. I'm sure you're all shouting the answer against your laptops right now. Well done. Uh, 4, so it'll be 13, I think. And then uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. I think it's that. So I would say the new price... I would finish off with a sentence, just to be safe. New value is... $232. And at this point, I would reach for a calculator to make sure I did the arithmetic correctly. If I haven't, it'll probably be this step that I've done incorrectly because I was trying to solve it in my head. I'm not very good with doing that in my head. But I think you get the idea, uh, even if I did my arithmetic incorrectly here. I'm just going to move on because oh, this is hard work. All right, let's do something more interesting. Look, if you can do this then you're set to go with all the questions from the uh, the chapter. Look, it's like $120 increased by 20%. And off you go. Oh, actually, actually, while I'm on this, you uh, may be asking yourself, why am I doing the trouble of writing it as, I'll just drop the dollar signs here for simplicity's sake, increased by uh, 20% of 120. Okay, why am I going to the trouble of doing all all three items together as one. Why can't uh why can't I just forget about this for now? Find out what this equals. And then once I've finished that solve, I would add it to the original cost. Why am I not doing it in two separated stages there? If you can see what I'm getting at here. I would do the purple bit first and then I just add it to my original cost. Why can't I do it that way? You could. You absolutely could and you should sorry <coughs> I think you would get full marks. However, I think you would agree that the way I solved it was a little bit harder. It actually shows a bit more skill, and that's actually what I want you all to learn, is how can you take the maths and convert it into one singular problem? That's actually a skill. It's difficult to learn, and you need, uh, you need practice. So you can split it apart like I just showed a few seconds ago, but you're not really learning the skill of how to assemble uh, a, a proper maths expression. That's what this thing is. And this whole line is a maths ex uh, algebraic expression, provided I start putting all the things in there. So that's why I prefer to solve it all as one big go, because I'm always keeping that skill sharp. So if I do this one really quickly, I would get 120 plus 20 over 100 times by 120 over 1. Cross out some zeros diagonally, cross out some zeros vertically. My bottoms look nice and like a number 1, so my answer should be pretty simple on the bottom. 120 plus, uh, oops, sorry, 
2 times 12, which gives me 24. And then I would sum that in my hand, which was 44, I think. And then it'll be finished. So that's that's just something I wanted to add to the video before I move on. All right. Um, I'll see how I go with this one. I haven't had time to sit on this. I wrote this for my year sevens a few years ago, actually. And I just thought it was cute because she's going shopping and she's looking for dresses. I don't think the dress is going to fit. Unfortunately, I didn't draw that to scale. Let's have a look. Math Hilda. Okay, Math Hilda went clothes shopping and found some great set clothes on sale. She bought one dress that was marked 20% off the original price of $110. She, and this is the next sentence, I'm going to change my colour. She also paid $85 for some shoes that used to be $150. Um, I think with this maths problem I've got here that I just cut and pasted from year 7, it's actually crossing over into the next lesson. Um, I think it's the purple bit, which is going to be um, blending into next lesson. So I might skip that part of my little video. But we can definitely do the green part of the solve. So how much did she pay for the dress? So that'll be the green bit. So the original price was uh, $110. And it's a it's percent off, and that means subtraction. We got our 20% here. 20% oh, of what? What am I what am I referring against? I'm referring to against the original cost. So of the original cost. So it appears twice. Now I just do my conversions here. So if I convert this into fraction form, I can solve it. So I got 110, subtract 20 over 100. Oh, is that multiplication symbol? 110 over 1. Divide some zeros, divide some zeros. I get 2 times 11, which is 22. Uh, over 1, which is just 22. And I can just hopefully solve that in my head. I don't know, was it 90? Oh, no. 89? I don't I can't do it. I'm just, I don't care. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. So you might find uh, a longer word problem on your test paper. I think this is probably more realistic uh, for your year eight exam rather than something like this, unless it was the front page of your exam paper. It's very routine. Although just looking at all the working involved, it's, I think it'd be worth quite a few points. So it might be worth uh, two half marks or possibly... Uh, uh, four half marks, I think, depending. So perhaps it might not be front page, maybe sort of like page two or page three. Look, I think you've got all the skills you need to solve most of these. Um, so if you're finding them like super basic, look, uh, I think, uh, you know, jump around a bit, try some interesting ones, and then you might start doing like one or two of these to really build your skills up for these word worded based problems. I'll leave the video for here and I'll hop to the next video for you. See you then. Bye.